Greetings YouTube and happy holidays. Today I'm going to talk about a list put out by UPI, United Press International, and this is their top 10 most divisive issues of 2010. Now I'm going to do it from number 10 up to number 1 because frankly number 10 is really fairly meaningless. And that would be Justin Bieber. I can't understand how Justin Bieber could be construed as divisive in any meaningful way, so we're just going to skip on to number 9, Glenn Beck's Restoring Honor Rally. Now, pretty much the only thing I have to say about this is that Glenn Beck is a professional troll. So long as we pay attention, he will get money. There's correlation there. If we stop paying attention, he'll stop getting paid, he'll go find something else to do. So, I say we ignore the man. Number 8, WikiLeaks. I believe that government should have 100% transparency unless it's absolutely required for national security. And some of the things that were being covered up in those cables had nothing to do with national security. They had to do with politicking and hiding things from the public eye that the government didn't want us to know about. For example, in Afghanistan, a company providing, a private sector company providing underage male prostitutes for police officers in hopes of getting their cooperation for a deal that would have helped to benefit that private sector company. And the Afghanistan government stepping in and saying, well, you know, let's keep this under wraps because if the American people hear about it, they're going to get really upset. Guess what? I'm really upset and I'm thankful that we have WikiLeaks for this information. Um, Next is the Ground Zero Mosque, which isn't really Ground Zero, isn't really a mosque, and isn't a controversy at all unless you're out there to show how much you don't like Muslims. Face it, folks, this isn't an issue. Moving on. TSA conducts full body scans and pat downs. Now this is an issue. This is undermining our Fourth Amendment rights, and we seriously need to tell the TSA that they need to go away, and they need to go away now. It's all security theater, folks. It doesn't keep us safe at all. Um, proposition 19, which would have legalized marijuana in California, which is a proposition I fully support. Not because I endorse recreational chemical use. In fact, I don't endorse the reuse of any recreational chemicals. I don't drink soda, alcohol, coffee. I don't smoke. I am militantly anti-tobacco. But Prohibition has failed miserably. All it's done is drive up our prison population. I mean, America has 5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's prisoners. That's an abomination. That's just evil, and we need to fix that. So, get, let's get rid of prohibition, folks, and stop putting people in jail for things that really all they need is treatment for. Um, next is increased use of unmanned drones in, pa in Pakistan. First up, drones should not be controlled by the intelligence and agencies. They should only be controlled by the military. Secondly, they should only be used in the event of actual military action, when we're at war with a country and we're not at war with Pakistan, um, or if the government in question requests our presence and the use of our drones. And if either of those two criteria are met, go for it, but only use them against legitimate military targets. But the intelligence agencies of the United States government should have absolutely nothing to do with drone use. Get them out of that business. Uh, the flotilla aid ships that were trying to get supplies to the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Um, by And I respect is the Israeli borders. No problem. But we need a two-state system. We need to recognize Palestine as a legitimate nation. And the Israelis need to know you can't go into international waters and attack vessels. That's a no-no. We should not endorse these actions. We should hold them accountable for those actions. Like, for example, not giving them any more funding until they recognize the existence of the Palestinian nation and work out an actual two-state system. Um, don't ask, don't tell, number two, which is thankfully gone, but it's a really good example of which of our politicians in the United States are raging homophobes. And it shows that John McCain is a shallow, empty parody of himself. He needs to be swept away into the dustbin of history, folks. 
He's from a bygone era, and we don't need him anymore. And lastly, the war in Afghanistan, which, you know, I believe something like 60 to 70 percent of Americans want us out of. So I don't understand how that can be construed as divisive either. We don't want to be there. We shouldn't be there. We are not the world police. Now, if we need to be his there as part of an international UN peacekeeping force, I don't have a problem. But then we need to have the exact same number of troops that all the other members of that UN peacekeeping force have. So, if there's a thousand troops from each nation, cool. There's ten thousand troops from each nation, cool. But we should not be providing the bulk of those troops. It's an international event. Everybody gets involved equally, or nobody gets involved. But we shouldn't be there being international police. It's not our job. I know it's harsh, but that's the reality. Bring those troops home. Let them enjoy a holiday here where they belong, not over there where they don't. So there you have it, folks. The ten most divisive news items according to UPI. So what do you think? Do you think these are actual divisive uh, news piece items? Do you think that there should be a two-state system? Do you think Justin Bieber is really all that important? Do you think that Don't Ask, Don't Tell is going to harm our military effectiveness? And is John McCain a shallow parody of himself? So tell me, what do you think about what the UPI has said? At least I am interested in knowing.